All right, we're going to work through the first, the first, the front side of the second page, questions 14 through 18. All right, this equation can be used to find H, the number of hour, hours it'll take Flo and Brian to mow their lawn. How many hours, okay, H is hours, will take them to mow their lawn? So this equation is asking me to solve for H. And a lot of y'all are worried because they're, they're in fraction form, okay? But think back to middle school days when we had to um, get like denominators. What is the least common, um, or the... The least common denominator, least common factor of three and six, well, it's six, right? How can I get three to be six by multiplying? Well, I can multiply three by two to get it to be six. Well, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And I'm only doing that to this fraction right here because this already has six as a denominator, okay? So two times H would give me two H. Two times three would give me six. Everything else stays the same. Well, now since I have like denominators, I can just combine what's on top. So 2H plus H gives me 3H. Okay, this is division in order to get rid of the 6 or to move it to the other side so we can solve for H. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to multiply. So I get 3H equals 6 because 1 times 6 is 6. And then finally divide by 3. So H would be 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So C would be your option. Okay. So number 15. The ferry boat carries passengers back and forth between two communities on the Peachville River. It takes 30 minutes longer for the ferry to make the trip upstream than downstream. The ferry's average speed is still in still water is 15 miles per hour. The ferry's current is usually five hour, miles per hour. This equation can be used to determine how many miles apart the two communities are, okay? What is M, the distance between the two communities? So this is the variable we're solving for. So let's look at this equation. Is there something I can simplify? Well, yeah, there is. This is just math, right? 15 minus five and 15 plus five. So let's go ahead and simplify those. So 15 minus five is 10. 15 plus 5 is 20, and then 0.5, right, if I wanted to convert that to a fraction, well, we can use our calculators, 0.5, and then push that arrow button, and it tells me it's 1 half, okay? Well, similar to this problem, the one above, number 14, I need a like denominator between 2 and 20. Well, I can get this 2 to be 20, by multiplying by 10. And again, on top and on bottom, and I'm only multiplying this fraction. So that gives me m divided by 10. Nothing else over here has changed. But 10 times 1 is 10, and 2 times 10, two, two times 10 is 20. So now that I have like denominators, I can, I can add these fractions. I'm gonna go back up here to work. So m divided by 10 equals m plus 10, divided by 20. Well, looky there, I have two fractions set equal to each other. This is when cross multiplication comes into play. But remember, this is a binomial, okay? So put parentheses around it to remind you. Well, m times 20 is 20m, and then 10 times m plus 10. So let's go ahead and distribute. 10 times M is 10, and 10 times 10 is 100. So now I have M's on the left, M's on the right. I want all the M's to be together. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract this 10M. So it's with the 20M. Well, 20 minus 10 is 10. And then I can ultimately divide by this 10, and I get M is 10 miles. Is that one of our options? Well, yes, 10 miles, okay? 16. For what values of x is the inequality 2 thirds plus x over 3 greater than 1 true? So we're solving for x again, but look, uh, just like 14 and 15, I'm adding two fractions, but now my denominators are equal. So I can just go ahead and add the top 2 plus x. They're not like terms, so I can't combine them, okay? Over 3 is greater than 1. In order to move this 3 out of the way, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So 2 plus x 
is greater than positive 3. And then I'm going to multiply, I mean, subtract that 2. So I'm going to get x is greater than, well, 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, watch your signs. All right, number 17, 17 and 18. All right, look at the steps when you use when solving 3x minus 3 times the quantity of x minus 2 equals 3 for x. So what, I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and solve it myself, okay? I see distribution, so 3x minus 6 equals 3. And I know I need to move that 6 over. And then I know i got to divide by 3. So if you can work it out yourself, that'll help. Okay, so let's watch their steps. So it says write the original equation. Use the distributive property. So 3 times x minus 6 equals 3. That looks good. Okay. Um, and then it shows us adding the 6 to both sides. Okay. And then it shows us the dividing by 3 and it shows us equals 3. The question is which step is, is the result of combining like terms? Okay. Well, combining like terms means adding those terms together that are alike. And right here I have a constant and right here I have a constant. So the adding the 6 over is actually combining those two constants. So that step, that process is done in step number one. So A would be your option. Okay. And then number 18. Based on the tables, at what point does the line y equals negative x plus 5 and y equals 2x minus 1 intersect? Okay. So let's look at these tables. We want to know when when they intersect. So they're going to have one point in common. Well, looking at this table, do they have any point in common? Okay. Well, negative 1, 6, negative 1, 3, nope. 0, 5, 0, negative 1, nope. 1, 4, 1, 1, nope. But look here, 2, 3, and 2, 3. This point is in common. Okay, so 2, 3 would be our answer. If you're not sure, you can't read the table, you can always set these equal to each other and solve. Okay, that's always an option.